My life be like. Good morning guys, Pops the Paladin here, and we are on Antorus, and this is going to be a heroic level difficulty. I'm only going to do heroic and mythic this time instead of normal heroic mythic, because pretty much all the mechanics are the same uh, for normal to heroic. I'm just going to give you a little insight. Well, I'm also going to do my videos a little bit different. I'm going to show you all the things that I could have done better to hopefully improve you, and then I'm going to talk about the instance as it's going on. So things that I am wearing for this particular fight are Sarn's Resolve and Heathcliff's Immortality. And the reason why I'm wearing Heathcliff's is because when you're tanking the boss, you're standing still. When you're not tanking the boss, you're running away. And you shouldn't be taking damage when you're running away, but you'll see that I do. But anyways, I'm, I'm running full turtle mode for this particular fight and pretty much all of the heroics the first time we're going through because as I'm raid leading, I want to make sure that I'm doing the right callouts. I'm staying alive myself so that way I'm not the hindrance to everything. And kind of moving on from there. So what I'm running is Blessed Hammer, Crusader's Judgment, and Righteous Protector. Crusader's Judgment and Righteous Protector, amazing synergy as it kind of gives us this uh, just constant Shield of the Righteous cooldown. Which then constantly gives us an Avenging Wrath cooldown uh, uptake. So, you know, we're throwing out damage. It's still a loss from Seraphim, but it's not a big loss from Seraphim. In this particular fight, you're going to see the damage intake that uh, we have. And that's about 70% physical damage. And... Almost all of it's coming from melee, so Heathcliff's Immortality, once again, a nice big thing. You're going to notice that my total overall damage intake uh, for this particular fight, 468,000. Uh, it could have been better, but once again, I'm just trying to work th through things. This is a very easy fight in the beginning, so I'm not too worried about that. Uh, for healer intake of what we actually, or what I actually needed uh, to do was pretty low. So let's take a look at my defensive debuffs, or my defensive buffs, sorry, in order to show you how I managed my damage intake. So my Blessed Stalwart, 68%, could have been a little bit better, more in the 70 range, uh, but we're going to see my cast efficiency here shortly, and my Shield of the Righteous, a 63% uptime. Now in terms of my cast efficiencies, you're going to notice that some of them that say can be improved. This is from WowAnalyzer.com. This is stating that I stood still the entire fight and cast everything like a robot. Uh, we know that you have to run away from the boss in this fight, so I'm not going to cast everything all the time. And that would be a waste of a cast if I put a Consecration way out in No Man's Land. So uh, what we're really looking at is the Shield of Righteous, and you're going to see I did 39 of 40 casts. Uh, so that's good, a good uptime on that one. And then my Eye of the Tear, I missed one, but that's at the end of the fight. Uh, so it was just kind of one of those ones where it was like, eh, uh, we ended the fight. Total healing done. Could my healing have been a little bit better? Yes, but did it need to be? No. Uh, my particular healing needed for me in general, based off this, is, you're going to see here that my Holy Paladin is amazing at what he does. And so um, I really don't have to try very hard. So it kind of goes down like that. All right, so generalized things that you do for the boss. We're gonna lust on pull, and uh, that might change for mythic, but right now we're gonna say we're gonna lust on pull for all of them. And we're gonna take down the annihilator cannon first because we don't want to deal with more annihilations we have to soak. We actually just wanna deal with more decimate, decimations that we need to move away from. And that's really easy with the ping pong strat that you see that I have on the world markers, the blue and the orange where we're gonna move back and forth. And I'll explain that when we finally get there. So we're going to Lust on Pull, Push into the Old War, Single Target Fight, and we're going to just blow everything. Now when we blow everything, it's kind of a disappointment when you are uh, going to be lead tank or main tank or whatever you want to call it, the tank that tanks first, because the first Bell Bombardment comes out within 8 seconds, so I'm wasting 12 seconds of my Avenging Wrath, and since it was our first pull and we didn't die, uh, you know, I couldn't do any better next time obviously i'll save my cooldown so you want to run away from fell bombardment because it hurts it knocks you around you can see here i got hit by three of them in a row uh but i was able to survive through it i was like oh no i'm gonna get hit by something and i'll just heal myself as i get hit then annihilation if it's in melee help soak it because it makes it really easy for melee uh it is split damage so when you're standing inside annihilation that large amount of damage is split between everybody since you're a tank and you can put up a dr uh, yay, you're going to soak a lot of that damage. Tank swaps on this one. Super easy, alright? If you have fell, fell Bombardment, you're off tank taunts. If they have it, guess what you do? You taunt. 
and that's it. So there's no stacks, there's no anything like that. It's just taunt when your other tank gets foul bombardment. And you may want to actually consider Agrimar's stride. You really shouldn't have to. I'm just really slow and I run in terrible paths. Uh, so, you know, you'll notice that. Now, when Apocalypse Drive comes up that you just saw us complete, he's going to do Eradication right after this. Now, typically you're supposed to run away from the boss, but I was like, I want to see what it's like. So I popped AD, and you're going to see I took almost zero damage. I stood on the boss, and therefore it prevented him from me being too slow to get back to the boss from the back of the room, uh, doing raid-wide AoE damage. I just stood there, popped a, div uh, popped a major, and saw what it did, and did absolutely nothing, so whatever. Uh... Everybody's supposed to run away during eradication, and the tank or the boss doesn't do that raid wide AoE because that's the design of the the mechanic. But I just wanted to see what it would be like, and since in heroic you can just stand there with an AD, whatever, just do it. Uh, I, I'm assuming it's gonna be a little bit harder hitting on mythic, but you know what? I really can't see it because that barely touched me through an AD without a shield of the righteous, so. Now, here comes this ping pong strat that I was talking about, and we've already been doing it, but we've been doing it very poorly. And as soon as I get this fell bombardment, you're going to see us actually do it uh, correctly after I come back for the next uh, Annihilation. So here they all are. They're on blue. Here comes Decimation. You see it all drop, then they all run to orange. Now here's the problem. There are people who aren't stacked with us. You saw those circles way out in the middle of nowhere? They aren't stacking with us, and you're doing it wrong. Look at all those arcane beams and crap behind me you're doing it wrong stack with us everybody needs to stack because the healing rain and we don't have a resto druid but efflorescence is also really important as well so we go into the next apocalypse drive and you kill the decimator cannon before a raid wide wipes you now what you're going to notice is all these green beams that we're dealing with green beams go go down during apocalypse drive and when we get into phase three, if you want to call this phase three, because we go into the first phase, both cannons, then we kill a cannon, then we run, then we do this. I'm going to call this phase three, because that's when uh, we lust in our guild. All phase threes, is, except this fight. Uh, I don't know. So anyways, we're going to see the green beams the entire time uh, during this phase. Just step out of it. And if you get caught in it, which you shouldn't, just use a defensive. It, it doesn't really hurt as a tank as everybody else kind of does but then again don't be bad don't stand in bad move and do all the good stuff now as we're in phase three the only thing you're moving out is this green line so everybody once again should be stacked at the front of the boss range melee ranged ranged get in and help the healers just aoe heal healing rain is good healing rain is wise uh plus you know chain heals and everything like that just it's it, there's no reason to be out in the middle of nowhere. Sorry about my phone. There's no reason to be out in the middle of nowhere. Just stack up on the boss. All right. And then you're just still dealing with fell bombardment as a tank. And really, it's an easy victory. I really enjoyed this fight because it had some pretty unique mechanics to it. Uh, so I'm curious to see what it's going to be like on mythic level difficulty. Uh, but all in all, very easy fight. Very controlled mm -hmm. amount of damage because, oh my gosh. Very controlled amount of damage uh, that's going on in this fight, uh, and uh, a real quick, easy victory. I don't think there's any good loot for us off this one, uh, but I will be doing a good uh, gear guide for you guys here shortly. Uh, I hope this was a good rundown for you if you're still stuck on this boss on Heroic. Uh, I wish you all the best in your raiding, and once again, all the best in your loot. I'll catch you in the next video. Stay tuned. There's a lot coming very quickly.